Hey guys, in this two-part tutorial, we're going to be using Lightroom and Photoshop and working through this photograph so it goes from this to this. So let's get started. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to stay in Lightroom where we're going to do all the basic adjustments on the photograph. I'm basically going to take you guys through my workflow and how I work in Lightroom, adjusting everything in here. And then we're going to jump into Photoshop in the second part of the tutorial where we're going to take this picture and enhance it further by eliminating some of the unwanted reflections, uh, cleaning up some of the image with the clone tool, um, and then obviously giving that effect of the car moving forward. But let's start here with Lightroom. I'm going to assume that you guys already know how to import a photograph into Lightroom, which is why I'm already in the develop part of this uh, program. Uh, what I usually do when I first start off is obviously I always shoot in RAW. It just gives me that many more options in Lightroom. And the first thing I do is I un go under lens corrections and I make sure that uh, enable profile corrections is enabled. What that basically does is uh, it detects which lens I shot the, uh, the photograph on. In this case, it was a Sigma 2470 art lens. Uh, this way, it just basically makes sure that um, uh, the, 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 the photo itself is optimized to whatever lens I was shooting on. So that's the first thing that I do. I also, uh, if you guys shoot in um, direct sunlight, sometimes you get chromatic aberration. In this case scenario, there really wasn't any, but just to make sure, I also enable that as well. The next module that I usually move on to is camera calibration. And most of the time, I usually leave this to Adobe Standard, but sometimes I like to play around with the different modes to see uh, what kind of effect it gives me. Uh, let's just see if there's, a, if there's one that's gonna show me a much different picture. Uh, let's see camera standard. As you can see, it's much more vibrant in this uh, mode here. Uh, you can go to camera landscape. You can go back to uh, flat, which is going to give you not much contrast. I think for this one, I'm just going to go camera standard. So once I am finished in the camera calibration module, I jump to the first one, which is the basic uh, module, where you can make all your exposure, highlight shadows, uh, clarity adjustments. In this case scenario, the temperature of the photograph is already sh uh, set to as shot. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, the exposure itself seems fine for me, uh, so I'm just going to leave that as well. You can obviously adjust that if you like, if you feel like that it's underexposed. But I'm just going to leave this alone for now. Uh, what I'm going to do first thing, though, is jump to the highlights and recover some of those highlights from the sky by basically reducing the highlights all the way to minus 100. Some of you guys may be thinking, oh, what is he doing? Um, this is the process that I usually take and usually uh, it works for me. But again, if you guys have a different process that may work for you, that's totally fine. Then what I do is I bring the shadows just to recover them almost all the way up, just so I can see all the details in the car. It makes it that much more easier for me to uh, work with the photo later on. But as well, it, uh, it just recovers the shadows as well. So let's just go with uh, 90. That seems about right for me. Next, what I do is I want to make sure that the whites are not too overblown. So what I do is in order to adjust those, I hold down the Alt Option key, and then I start moving it to the left until the first speck of white appears. I just want to make sure that uh, it's not overblown. As you can see, it's masking whatever. Uh, you can see where the whitest whites are. So I want to make sure that it's just just enough so you can see a speck. And then I'm doing the same thing with the blocks. Then I'm going to move the slider to the left again, 
but I'm just gonna see how it's showing the blocks, the black is blocks. For this one, I'm just gonna adjust it so, so you recover some of those shadows as well that we blew up. Uh, so I, as you can see, this is what I got as a result. Again, you can eyeball this as well, whatever your preference is, but I like to do both just to kinda uh, give me an idea of the end effect that I'm gonna get. So, you know what? I think it's fine if I actually go back to zero on the whites. Again, I'm kind of eyeballing it. Um, I think that's also sometimes the best way to do it instead of uh, masking it out. But uh, this is what I, this is the, usually the process that I take. Uh, and looks pretty good to me the way it is now. The next adjustment that I jump to is the clarity. This is where you can actually adjust the, uh, the amount of detail that the photograph uh, shows you. Uh, so you never want to overdo it because it's just going to make the photograph look way too harsh, uh, way too uh, animated. You, want, you do want to bring out some of those details in the car and in the trees, but you never want to overdo it. And sometimes you even want to do certain parts of the photograph. But for this example, I'm just going to do the entire photograph just to maybe, uh, let's just say 15. The next step would be to adjust the vibrancy on the photograph. And what this does, it's different than saturation. In vibrancy, it takes the dullest colors in this photo and it just ups the saturation up of those. So I'm just gonna up it just a little bit just to bring out some of those uh, greens and yellows. I'm just gonna leave the saturation uh, the way it is for now and I'm just gonna adjust it later on in the tutorial. Now that we're finished making the adjustments uh, on the basic module, I'm just gonna kinda show you guys what uh, the photo looks like before and after. If you go down to this uh, little YY uh, box here, if you, there's a drop down arrow, you click before, after, left and right, it actually shows you the, the before and after picture. So as you can see, we have brought out some of the, uh, we've recovered some of the highlights in the, in the sky. We have obviously brought out some of the saturation and some of the details in the photograph as well. Uh, and it's looking much better already. So let's move on to the next step. Now I'm gonna go back to the normal view. And to do that, you just go down to the left, uh, bottom left corner here and click on this uh, rectangle and it takes you back to the current state of the photograph. Um, one other adjustment that I'm gonna make in the basic panel is uh, I'm just gonna take the temperature and move it a little bit towards the, uh, the bluish side. maybe to like 5,000, close enough. So I'm just gonna close this basic panel off. Uh, I'm gonna skip the tone curve this time. Uh, might tackle it in one of my next tutorials, but just gonna jump down right down to the hue saturation and luminance panel. This is where I'm gonna adjust all the different colors in the photograph, particularly the blues, greens, and yellows. Uh, in this case scenario, just going back to the saturation. I'm gonna bump up the yellow quite a lot. Um, maybe up to 75. The greens as well, maybe to a 10. And what I'm not happy right now with is the, the amount of blue that's being reflected onto the car. So what I'm gonna do is take the aqua and the blue. There's probably not any aqua, but just to make sure, I'm gonna bring both down to about minus 70 as well, just so I don't really see it. Uh, yeah, I like that effect. So I think I'm happy with the, uh, the saturation levels on all the colors right now. So I'm just gonna jump to the hue and in this case scenario, what I'm gonna do is adjust the, the orange so it's a bit more yellow. Let's just say 
up to 30. And I'm gonna take the yellow and make it um, a lot more orange. Again, this is all very subjective. Um, you guys are obviously, you can adjust these as you wish because uh, again, these are just colors. And I don't like the green in this photograph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce it all the way to minus 100. So this photograph gives me more of a yellowish look and there's not really any greens anywhere. And take the aqua maybe down to like minus 80. And then there's a red tree behind here. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to adjust the slider all the way to 100. So it kind of blends in with the rest of the trees. So I think I'm happy with that. Let's go back to the saturation again. Let's maybe bring up the yellows a little bit more. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. And then let's jump to the luminance panel. So I think in this case scenario, I'm just gonna up the yellows. As you can see, it really makes those pop a lot more. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe just adjust it to like 50. I think I'm pretty happy with the overall effect on the colors. So I'm just gonna leave them as is right now and just gonna jump into the next part. Now we're gonna move on to the detail module. I'm going to just skip the split toning this time. Uh, we can probably tackle that in a future uh, tutorial, but let's go into the detail. And this is uh, all dependent on, I guess, how, um, how much noise there is in the photograph, what kind of ISO shot at. But uh, for this particular photograph, I shot a very low ISO, so there's not really any noise in the photograph itself. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, this work, these numbers work for me, but again, this could be different based on the, the amount of uh, noise that's in the photograph. But in this case scenario, I'm just gonna bump it up to probably around 70. Just, uh, and then I'm gonna take the luminance, the noise reduction, and probably bump it up to like 40, again. These are the numbers that are working for me, but they could be different for you based on the ISO you shot at, uh, the amount of noise that's in the photograph itself, uh, and the overall effect that you want in the photograph. But based on those adjustments, I'm pretty happy with the amount of detail that I have in the photograph, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Next, we're gonna close up the detail module and move on to the effects module. And here I'm just gonna basically show you that you can apply a vignette to your photograph if you choose to. Um, you can see you just move the slider either to the left if you want a black vignette and then to the right if you want a white one. Uh, in this instance, I'm just gonna leave as is. So that's it for the effects module. So before I move on to the graduated filter and the adjustment brush, I'm just gonna go back to the basic adjustments really quickly. And it's one thing I forgot to do is just up the contrast just by a little bit. So I'm just gonna bring it up to about 10. And maybe I'm just gonna to tone down on the, uh, on the shadows here. So I'll go back to about maybe 80, just to get those shadows a little bit darker and get a bit of more contrast into the photograph. Next, I'm gonna move on to the graduated filter tool, which sits right up here, it's this little rectangle. What I'm gonna do with this one is hold shift and drag it from the bottom, maybe all the way up to the car here. And for this particular photograph, what I'm gonna do is just down play the exposure here to maybe 1.5 seems about right to me. And then maybe just up the clarity just a little bit. So it gives it that little sharpness. So what I'm trying to do here is give more emphasis to the subject as everything at the bottom will be darker. And of course, with the graduated filter tool, you can adjust any of these other sliders here. But for this particular example, um, I'm just going to uh, tone down the exposure. I like the way this looks, so I'm just gonna leave it. So I think these are all the adjustments that we're gonna make to this photograph in Lightroom for this particular part of the tutorial. I'm just gonna show you guys the before and after picture just to show you the difference that we've made. 
as you can see, it's quite drastic and I like the end result. So I'm just going to leave it where it is. Uh, for the next part, what I'm going to do is go into Photoshop and take out any unwanted reflections in the car, any unwanted objects in the background and give the, uh, the final touch, which is basically give the effect of the illusion of the car moving. So join me in the next part of the tutorial where I'm going to jump to Photoshop. Uh, until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Leave any comments in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, thank you guys.